In sections 2.1 and 2.2, we will describe and graph distributions of quantitative variables. Whenever we are asked to describe a distribution, we must describe the following clearly. First, we must describe the shape of the distribution and whether the distribution has any outliers, thus the SO, shape outliers. Second, we must describe the center of the distribution, the C. And third, we must describe the spread of the distribution. And we will talk more about each of these in detail when we get to examples. Well, first, let's uh, have a quick refresher and complete the following frequency table. If we look at the first class, uh, we, are, we have GPAs uh, between 1.0 and 1.9, including 1.0 and including 1.9. So we have two set GPAs. So the frequency is two. Two students have a GPA between 1.0 and 1.9, including both 1.0 and 1.9. The reason we know we include 1.9 is because the next class starts at 2. How many students have a GPA between 2.0 and 2.9, including 2.0, including 2.9? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 3.0 and 3.9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And we have one student who has a GPA of 4.0 or above. Now, from this, we're going to build a histogram. A histogram is a visual representation of the distribution of a quantitative variable. The x-axis represents the values. So in this case, the values are the GPA. That is going to be your x-axis. And the y-axis always represents the frequency or relative frequency. So in this case, the frequency will be the y-axis. So let's label our x-axis, which is the GPA, and our y-axis, which is the the frequency, let's use a proper scale. So how do we know what scale to use? Well, we look at the lower limits. The lower limits are 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. The lower limits will go on our x-axis. So this is 0. We don't want to start there. So this is 1.0. This is 2.0. This is 3.0. This is 4.0. And since it goes to 4.9, let's go to 5.0. Now, the frequency is how many uh, are in each class. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay, so um, let's, uh, let's graph the first, uh, first class. We have two students, so the frequency is 2, who have a GPA between 1.0 and 2.0. We have six students who have a GPA between 2.0 and 3.0. So let's go up to 6. That's your second class. We have 7 students who have a GPA between 3.0 and 4.0. And we have 1 student who has a GPA between 4.0 and 4.9. Okay, so there's our histogram. Histogram comes from a frequency table. Here's an example. Data was collected for a sample of organic snacks. The amount of sugar and milligrams in each snack is summarized in the histogram below. Part A, how many snacks are represented in the histogram? Well, let's take a look. In the first class, so these are, uh, are uh, snacks that have uh, sugar between 160 and 170 milligrams. There are four. Between 170 and 180, so this is between four and six, so it's going to be five. Between 180 and 190, we have 10 snacks. Between 190 and 200, we have 13 snacks. Then we have, sorry, we have eight snacks between 200 and 210. We have, this is again between four and six, so we have five snacks between 210 and 220. And we have two snacks between 220 and 230. So how many total snacks is that? That's going to be four plus 5, plus 10, plus 13, plus 8, plus 5, plus 2. And if we add all these up, this will give us a total of 47 snacks. Okay. Sec part B. How many snacks had more than 200 milligrams of sugar? So if we look at 
200 milligrams, any snack that has more than 200 milligrams of sugar will be included in part B. So we have eight snacks in the 200 to 210 class, plus five snacks between in the 200, 210 and 220 class, and we have two snacks in the 220 and 230 class. So if we add these up, this will give us 15 snacks. And be sure to always include your units. Okay, how many snacks uh, had between 170 to 220 milligrams of sugar? So this is 120, uh, 170 and this is 220. So let's see how many snacks we have. We have five between 170 and 180. We have 10 between 180 and 190. We have 13 between 190 and 200. We have eight between 200 to 210, and we have five between 210 and 220. We stop there because we don't want to go to 220, 230. That's more than 220. So if we add these up, this will give us a total of 41 snacks. Once again, let's not forget the units. Lastly, uh, what percentage, now remember now this time we're looking for percentage. What percentage of snacks had more than 200 milligrams of sugar? Okay, so let's see how many snacks have more than 200 milligrams of sugar. So 200 milligrams is here. Okay, now we actually did this in part B. We have 15 snacks that have more than 200 milligrams of sugar. But when you take a percentage, it's a number of snacks over 200 milligrams of sugar divided by the total number of snacks, that's 47. 15 divided by 47, this will give you 0 0.319. But we want a percent, so we multiply this by 100%, and this will give us 31.9%. Uh, this next example, please try by yourselves, and we will go over this in class. Now, let's talk about describing and understanding the shape of a distribution. The first distribution is called a uniform distribution. In a uniform distribution, each class has approximately the same frequency. The second distribution is symmetric. In a symmetric distribution, we have one mode. And if you notice, each side, the frequency is about symmetric. So this is approximately symmetric distribution. This distribution is called skewed left. Skewed left means that a majority of the values actually fall to the right. This is called a left tail. So if you think of this as um, an animal, can draw, but let's say that this was some kind of animal here. Its tail is to the left, so this is skewed left. Skewed left means a majority of the values actually fall to the right. This one is skewed right, so its, uh, its tail is to the right, which means a majority of the values actually fall to the left. So just remember that when you have a skew, the majority of the values fall to the opposite side. So skewed left, majority values fall to the right, skewed right, majority of the values fall to the left. Unimodal means we have one mode. Bimodal means we have two modes or two peaks. We can also have multimodal, which means we have multiple peaks. Now we're going to use these to describe our distributions. Okay, so please describe the following distributions. In, in part A, researchers collected data on a mother's IQ of 36 randomly sampled gifted children. The shape of this distribution is it's approximately symmetric and it has one mode so the mother's iq are unimodal and symmetric with no outliers so we have in the first case in socks we have the shape and outliers that's the first thing we describe the center of the distribution most iqs are centered between 115 and 120 iq points the spread, the spread is the, the lowest and the highest IQ when the distribution is symmetric. Okay, so once again, when the distribution is symmetric, we're going to look at the lowest and the highest IQ. So the spread IQ ranges from 100 to 135 IQ points. So once again, whenever we describe a distribution, we always use socks, shape outliers, center, and spread. Okay, now let's describe the second distribution. The distribution of characters used from 50 emails is given below. 
So in this case, most people keep their email short. So uh, it looks like most people used less than 20 characters um, in their emails. Okay, now if you look at this, this is right tail. If this was a, an animal, the tail is to the right. What that means is a skewed right because most of the most of the values are to the left. So the distribution is skewed right with outliers. We have two potential outliers. The center, now the center, we're going to discount the outliers and we're going to look at this interval right here. So the center looks to be right about here, which is 15. So the distribution is centered around 15 characters. Remember to always include units. So here, like for example, we had IQ points. Here we have characters, so it's 15 characters. The spread, we're not going to count the outliers. When you have a skew, either skew right or skew left, we don't count the outliers. So the spread, ignoring the outliers, is ranging from 0 to 30 characters. So when you describe a distribution, always use socks, shape outlier, center, and spread. Now, in a stem and leaf plot, the entries on the left are called stems, and the entries on the right are called leaves. The stems can be multiple numbers, but the leaves can only be one digit. So for example, if you look at the stem of 2 and the leaf of 6, that represents a score of 26. If you look at a stem of 6 and a leaf of 1, that, that describes a score of 61. So the stem plot above represents scores on a quiz. The lowest score is, well, the lowest score is going to be a stem of 2 and a leaf of 1. So the lowest score is 21. The highest score is, we got a stem of 8 and a leaf of 0, so the highest score is going to be 80. Now, if you look at it going sideways, look at what's happening. The distribution, majority of the values fall to the left and has a right tail. So the distribution, if you look at it going sideways, is going to be skewed right, which means the majority of the values are going to fall to the left, which means this is probably a pretty hard quiz because most students uh, either performed in the 20s, 30s, or 40s. Okay, let's create a stem and leaf plot for the following distribution. We have quiz scores. So on the left, we have our stems, and our right, we have our leaves. Remember that our leaves can only be one digit, where the stems can be multiple digits. So we have a stem of 8. Then we have a stem of 9. And then we have a stem of 10, because we can only leave one number for the leaf. So we have 87. 87, 89. So leaves are 779, 779. For, for uh, the stem of 9, our leaves are going to be 6 and 6, 96, 96. Then for 101, we have 1, 3, and 3. So if you quickly look at this distribution, the dis distribution is going to be bimodal since it has two peaks.